Hello again, it's Priscilla Batzell in Spring Hill, Florida at Expressionist Art Studio Gallery in the backyard. And I have a 14 by 14 inch canvas in front of you and piles of colors just out of sight. And I am going to put colors that I like, as I will often do, starting with, I think I'm going to use some of this black enamel if it opens. No, can't open it. Yes, yes. Be better than having it dump out like that thing that happened the other day. So I'm just going to keep using the colors that I did clear the tops on and make some land. And I'm, yes, that was brown, which is highly unusual for me. And I am going to expect to scoop these out. I could probably scoop these out with a smaller scoop and have better luck. We'll see. what happens. That's a green gold from Color Shifting Folk Art. This is a minty green from Folk Art that's a Color Shifting. This is an iridescent turquoise they don't make anymore. Well, at least not yet. That is a dioxidine purple. I think it came from Hobby Lobby originally. They're closed right now, but they'll probably open again, we hope. This is a bronze someone sent me. I think it's bronze. I want a little bit more of that black, but I'll settle for the blue. And what I want to do is put some odd color in there, but I'm not sure what odd color that could be. Maybe a little bit of, yes, a little bit of that orange that has, it's actually uh, 24 karat deco art uh, gold with a little orange in. So let me just try this and I'm going to grab little bits and tip as far as things will go. And I'm going to let things overlap, and I'm going to do that a whole bunch. Just going to grab stuff that makes me happy and put it down where I think it'll still make me happy. And hopefully I'll get a different batch of colors every time. Because a lot of times I'll tip with an edge catcher, and then I'll take the paint off the edge catcher. I don't want that right next to that, because that's the same. So I'm just going way outside my comfort zone on purpose, figuring that once I get these colors spread out as far as I can get them spread out, that I can come back and put my sky in. And I'm hoping that I'm right. I'm just going to keep giving myself new areas of color. I might even use a Princeton Art Tool Catalyst spatula to take the rest of those colors right out of there. I don't know if or when I'll be using an edge catcher, but my colors are staying nice and fresh. And I'm going to drip all those down. I might... Where's an edge catcher? I want one. It doesn't matter what it looks like, so long as it can catch some paint. Really liking the random looking patterns. And filling in. And I know since I'm not overly agitating that paint on the edge catcher, that I can scoop it right up and stick it right back in again, too. I can also use what I've got there to cover the edge of my canvas all the way down, like so, which is a pretty cool trick, in my opinion. And where's my... Yep, yeah, there's my little spatula. So I can take my, my slightly too mixed paint and stick it in, and it becomes a dark area. I can just tap that spatula, tap and drag and pull, do all kinds of stuff just like that. That's looking pretty slick to me. I like it. So what that means to me is I want to do it some more. And I might want to put some more colors in here that I think I liked up there, which is the Prussian blue and maybe just a little bit of that neon purple, which was probably very naughty of me. And a little more of that dioxidine purple. Yeah, we'll just go for it. Um, I like that black. I didn't use much of the green, so I'm going to put some of that in there. That's a, that's a green from so long ago that I have no idea where it's from at all. What else do I want in there? I, have a, I don't need a lot more copper since I can see I have a lot of copper. And my idea is that I'll be able to use an edge catcher to tip this down. 
I like the odd shapes I'm getting. I mean, I really like them. I like this whole playing field of colors. And I'm going to make sure I take all of my color right out of my child's plastic sand sandcastle building <laughs> shovel. And what now? I have more colors. I don't want to mix them too much. So I'm going to be a little cautious about scraping them down. It's time to get a cleaner edge catcher. Maybe one that's not too long so it doesn't... If you use edge catchers, make sure they're not too big so they don't flop into your artwork. So what I usually do is go the wrong direction first. And then I'm going to let that fill in right down there, hopefully. And if I get too much paint, rather than letting it all pool, well, I am going to let it pool. I'm going to rock my bottom edge. I'm going to pull it down a little. I wanted to let it pool and then go back up in, and it will still do that to a degree. I'm just going to rotate that line of paint that you see over there right around. And I don't need to worry too much about it, because the truth is I will be scraping that off. I like that green part that I just annihilated. Too late. Think about it now. Now once I get a, a bunch of paint to flow on here again, I could actually tip it down again and back up again. But I like the, um, the very natural random shapes that are going on here. You can just scrape all of that paint right off. Let it go down over the edge. So I have a perfect cover. I do need to make sure it's going to be thin enough so that if I do a sky, which is my intention on what I want to do next, which might be kind of cool to do. This is strange. That's kind of strange too. All right, well, I'm going to stick my finger in there and then I'm going to do a little more tipping. And if I don't completely love what I've got, it's okay because I can add paint whenever I feel like it. And I'll prove it. So I'm just going to go all the way up this time. I'm going to go over too. So I get those nice horizontals that I like. And I can go back the other way. Got a little bit of paint coming off there. I can just wipe it down. And then I can go right back up again. I like to do, once in a while, I like to do this. Just to help some paint move. And this right here. that looked like a drip, that was a drip, it's going to be manipulated back into position. I see this paint here and I want it to kind of go over there and take that strange hook out of the center of the composition. That lady that owns like eight, eight poodles is definitely home from from whatever she does or she's feeding them or something because they're going crazy over there. All right, let's see what I think about that. Let's let you see what I think about that first. So that's the position that I'm hoping that it looks good in. I don't want any black spots in that, my sky. So what do I do now? What do I do now? What do I do now? I put some white across my sky. And I'm thinking about whether I want to put... I got colors left. That's the problem. <laughs> I don't need those colors. I'm pretty good. I'm, I'm really well off. And they're pretty well spread so that they won't spread too much further. They might spread some, but I'm really hoping not. I'm going to wipe off my spatula and my fingers real quick while I think about this and throw that shovel in the bucket. I've got five of those, so I don't need to worry about that too much. 
and I'm going to take the white and put some of my iridescent purpley pink in there and then I'm going to think about it. Now really I could just swipe that down there. And honestly, I'm thinking that might be the way to go. Once paint is next to paint, though, it will flow other paint. Which means the next time I tip this, I could have a problem. But I've got so much paint there right now, that I think I'm just going to use it. And if I want to add something else, and I don't want to do it now, there's always tomorrow. Clouds can look like that. I've seen clouds look like that before. I've got so much, I've got a perfect amount of paint, I really do. Which means that I can go all the way to the top and use my leftovers. I may have a problem getting rid of that dark spot that came off my finger, but at least it's right over the top. That'll teach me not to wipe my hands off. Let's see what happens when we tip that up. I really want to put something blue in there. You know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm not even going to try and fix the brake. Am I? <laughs> you know I might. Let's get a clean skewer out. Since I got some. see what happens when we just gently drag that blue. Oop, what happens is I drip. Make sure there's no more black stuff going to come right off my hands. Kind of like that. Got a nice bead of paint that can go right over the top. I can roll it right down, and if it's thick enough, I can just use my finger to rub it right in. I can also roll a skewer, or tap a skewer. Plenty of paint on this edge, wow. Perfect. I do happen to like pink skies. Pinky purple skies, especially. And I really was going to tip that, so that heavy line of paint can become a beautiful sky if I'm very, very careful with it. But I like that blue. I'm going to hold it, the skewer at the very end and rest it. Usually I've got more contours to my land. Let's have a look at that. I'm doing all that upside down. That's probably not smart of me. I kind of want to put some of my white metallic in there, which I'm seeing not at all, and should be right in front of me. There it is. I like when the clouds are doing their own thing and the weather's moving. You've got two different fronts crossing over each other in the sky. I still want to tip that and see what happens, because I don't mind if I get some mountains. You know what else will help that? Will help, what will help that is a little green up here. It'll come out. A little blue over there. Come on out. Whoa, okay. Kind of, why don't I just do what I think? Put some of that green in there. I could grab another skewer, or I could clean this one. Twice. 
make sure that's pretty clean. Maybe I don't want to tip it. Maybe I just want to use what I've got on the skewer. My rabbit has been getting more and more brazen lately. I look over and a foot and a half from me suddenly there's <laughs> there's a bunny. When I lived in Great Britain I had a rabbit that was wild. My husband worked for the local veterinary and he saved him from a cat. I like that. I kind of want to put some turquoise up there, but it always winds up looking like water for me, so I don't really want to... Yeah, I like that very much, actually, and I've got nice paint. On my skewer, which means I can blend whatever I want. Back and forth until I like what I see. And any of the paint that I've got on my skewer will go right down over that edge and fill in. And the other edge is well on its way to being filled in also. So I am pretty well done with this. I don't have to tip, which is okay because sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Most of the time it works. It's good if you, uh, if you practice though. So this is Priscilla Batsell in Spring Hill, Florida at Expressionist Art Studio Gallery in the backyard reminding you that I have a link tree for all my links right under the video and the Amazon link that where you can shop at no added cost to you is right under there. And if you shop there it helps me out. Also you can find Pixels.com and Fine Art America and they are linked also on the Shop Now button at the Facebook page Expressionist Art Studio uh, Totes and More. Also on, on the link tree is Expressionist Art Fans and collect Expressionist Art Studio Gallery, maybe not. <laughs> um, anyway, it says fans and collectors. Sometimes I love putting my finger in and finding that I'm dredging up some wonderful color, like that blue just came right up. Someday maybe I'll be brave enough to do a whole finger painting. I think that would be really cool. This is nice and slippery. I'm still going to torch. Uh, if you guys share my artwork, share my videos, I really appreciate it. If you, uh, if you give me a thumbs up, that's very helpful, and I appreciate it too. If you uh, give me a comment, thank you very much. You make my, you make my day, and uh, you keep my morale high. Donations are uh, appreciated through PayPal and Patreon. There is an exhibition video in the last 20 seconds of any video on the end screens where you can find the monthly drawing. And figure out a way to enter if you want to do that and see what the prizes are. There is always something before I'm done. <laughs> Usually it's a bug. Anyway, so I'm liking this. It looks like a few other things, but you know, there's always a possibility of trees or a sunset or something. This could be stage one or it could be done. Either way you look at it, it's fine. The Floetrol in my mixture is in the pouring recipe below the video and Floetrol will flatten out the paint. I'm running out, it's uh, because things are hard to get right now, I'm kind of running out of deco or pouring medium, but um, I'm running out of a few things to tell you the truth. The monthly, uh, the monthly drawing and the donations definitely help me pay for art supplies, so I love you guys. There's uh, over 69,500 of you on Expressionist Art Studio Gallery Priscilla Batsell, and if you're not familiar with Phoenix Rising for Silabat Cell Art, you ought to check it out because there's some really nice pieces of artwork I put over there to start a new channel, just in case the old one wasn't viable anymore, which is what it seemed like. And um, so I appreciate you guys' support. Please come visit me and subscribe if you're of a, in, of a mind and you're inclined. And uh, as I said, I love you guys. Thanks for being here. My two books are on the Amazon link. It's because I can and unlimited possibilities. They are both in soft cover and ebooks. And any other links you might find there that I haven't talked about? Mm, Teespring, Teespring clothing, all over print leggings and t-shirts. I'll see you guys in on. I love you. I think I said that like four times now, but it's true every time. <laughs> Bye for now. Priscilla out.